Joining us now, Republican Congressman from Minnesota, Tom Emmer, taking no shortage of questions from Manu Raju on Capitol Hill. He is the majority whip in the House, and he's endorsed Donald Trump for president in 2024. Congressman, I appreciate your time this morning. I know there's an old adage on the Hill, those who actually know whip counts don't actually talk about them. Those who do talk about them don't actually know. But when it comes to impeachment, do you think your conference will be lined up to move forward on that on the House floor? Well, the uh, process was uh, pretty heavy last night. Uh, Personally, uh, I believe it's appropriate. It's been a year-long process, uh, very thoughtful uh, and detailed. And you've got a uh, you've got the head of Homeland Security who is charged legally with securing our southern border. And Phil, uh, he's not only failed to do that; he's willfully uh, disobeyed uh, existing law, uh, which requires that you detain certain individuals. Uh, and instead, he's created this mass catch and release program, which has resulted in things like in my home state, uh, about a year ago, uh, they had a uh, individual on the terrorist watch list come across the border. They had him and they released him into the country. He was here for a year before he was picked up. He's a member of Al-Shabaab, uh, the terrorist group uh, Al-Shabaab. Okay. He was picked up in Minneapolis recently. So uh, the, uh, the process is moving forward and I expect the uh, articles will pass out of committee and then we'll pass it off the floor. When it comes to, to process, the precedent here, there hasn't been a cabinet official impeached in 148 years. And you've had uh, several constitutional scholars weigh in, including uh, one who said, whatever else my orcas may or may not have done, he has not committed bribery, treason, or high crimes and misdemeanors. I urge principled Republicans who care about the Constitution to oppose those in their party who are seeking to impeach and remove my orcas. That's Alan Dershowitz, who was a defender of Donald Trump in the first impeachment. And then there's also this. Take a listen. I don't think they have established any of those uh, bases for impeachment. The fact is impeachment is not for being uh, a bad cabinet member or even being a bad person. Uh, it is a very narrow standard. That was Jonathan Turley, who also agreed with your assessment during the Trump impeachment efforts, which they were political, there wasn't enough due process uh, and lacked precedent. How do you respond to that? Oh, I think there's been plenty of due process. Uh, you've got uh, an individual who's testified before every other committee in, in the Senate, in the House, perhaps more than any other uh, cabinet member, and yet he won't come in and testify in front of the uh, Homeland Security Committee uh, to explain why it is he has literally been violating, willfully violating the Immigration and Naturalization Act by uh, failing to detain individuals who are coming across our southern border illegally. And there are other legal violations. I have great respect for all of these uh, constitutional experts, right. uh, but the facts speak for themselves. And uh, I think what you'll see coming out of committee now, because I'm assuming those interviews uh, have been taking place before all of the, uh, the debate, uh, what you're seeing coming out of committee is I believe they will find that he has willfully disobeyed existing laws. He's willfully violated or abused uh, and ignored the uh, parole law uh, okay. in this country. Uh, and that's why I think ultimately he should have resigned uh, long ago. He, you got 8.3 million people that come up across the border under his watch. Right. 1.57 million gotaways. This is outrageous. Remember when Jay Johnson, no, who was sir, under the I, Obama I, administration, said a thousand a day was uh, was a crisis. There is no uh, question. This is well beyond that. On the numbers, we are at a level that we've never been. Democrats acknowledge that as well at this point. I should note that the DHS team says that they have been trying to negotiate for. Uh, that testimony, which hasn't taken place yet. Obviously, the, the process is still moving forward, but it's also happening as there are efforts to try and address the crisis at the southern border. Republicans have passed their own legislation, H.R. 2. There's a bipartisan group uh, in the Senate that is working towards their own deal. In the Wall Street Journal editorial board, traditionally conservative, says, quote, grandstanding is easier than governing, and Republicans have to decide whether to accomplish anything other than impeaching Democrats. Mr. Mayorkas is an easy political target, but impeaching him accomplishes nothing beyond political symbolism. The point being being, you guys have a piece of legislation, the Senate's working toward a piece of legislation, and yet that seems to have been rejected out of hand. Is legislation just off the table at this point, unless it's your bill? No, I think that's uh, uh, your interpretation or, or the uh, journalist community's uh, interpretation. Nothing's off the table. 
Uh, the fact is the House passed the strongest order bill uh, in the last 20 years. It would do things like end catch and release. It would right. do things like restore the remain in Mexico policy, reform the broken asylum process and, and deal with uh, this parole issue, which seems to uh, uh, be way too flexible uh, for the administration because uh, they're not enforcing it. No, I, uh, we, we did that. The Senate is having discussions, but we don't have a deal out of the Senate. And what has been leaked out of the Senate uh, suggests things like uh, increasing parole by up to 50,000 people a year. Uh, if that's the case, Phil, uh, it's going to be really hard for us to get the votes to I pass think what, that. I think what's the difficult, House sir, to, but we got to see it first. No, no, and I understand and I agree. Seeing the legislation would be a, a positive step here, and I feel like this has been dismissed out of hand because of things like whether or not the 5,000 threshold is a valve to turn something on or off, or whether or not that's a, a, a minimum. And I've been told it's the latter. But when you hear things like some of your colleagues have said, uh, it, it raises some of the questions that I've had. Take a listen. Why would we do anything to try to help improve that dismal number with a border bill being drafted in the Senate that isn't really serious about border security? Joe Biden doesn't need Congress. Why are we always feeling that, that Congress needs to do something about the southern border? We don't have to do a damn thing. And I think that gets at the gist of why I'm asking if there is no legislative solution and why things are being dismissed out of hand. That's a member of your conference. No, I, I think what you're hearing is the frustration that we don't have a sincere uh, intention to secure the southern border coming from Joe Biden and this administration. Uh, you brought up the 5,000. Uh, again, I go back to Jay Johnson under Obama, who said 1,000 uh, illegal immigrants coming across our southern border in one day is a crisis. Right. Uh, we had 302,000 come across our southern border in the month of December alone, an all-time record high. The idea that uh, you would send over something, and again, uh, you said it, and I agree with you totally, uh, we have to see legislative text before we say that we can't support something. Right. But if in fact, if in fact you're talking about more than one person coming across our southern border illegally, that can't be tolerated any longer. Yeah, it's we do have to see the text. We'll see if they actually get to that point. I do want to ask you before I let you go, um, because you're a respected member on Capitol Hill. I covered Capitol Hill when you were there. People in your conference like you. Democrats respect you. Um, the former president, when you uh, were the conference's choice to be speaker, dismissed your bid. He called you totally out of touch with Republican voters, a globalist rhino. He individually called House GOP members to whip against you. Afterwards, he told associates he was proud to have, quote, killed your effort. Um, last week, you endorsed him for president. I know you're laughing, but last week, you endorsed him for president. Given kind of the history that I laid out, was that a hard choice for you to make? No, Donald Trump is going to be our candidate. The bottom line for me is we must win this next election. We cannot afford uh, four more years of Joe Biden's uh, failed economic policies, open borders, uh, all the problems that have come up around the world because of his inability to state a course of action uh, and, frankly, uh, take action. So we, this uh, country cannot afford another four years of Joe Biden. Uh, Donald Trump is going to be our nominee, and he'll be the next president of the United States. And all House Republican leadership is behind him. Congressman Tom Emmer of Minnesota. A lot of Minnesota fans on this set, uh, and my colleague Poppy Harlow. She sends her best to your home state. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. <gasps>